Hi, and welcome to the video on MapReduce. So we're going to talk about the MapReduce framework, uh, which has gotten a lot of popularity recently, especially in light of a lot of advances in, in being able to deal with uh, big data problems. So let me talk a bit about why MapReduce was, was designed and what purpose it actually serves. Uh, so imagine you had some data, and you had to kind of process that data in some fashion. And the way you would typically uh, do this historically is, is if you wanted to process a lot of data, you might um, write a computer program, and let's let's kind of draw a computer here. So you might you might write a computer program uh, and uh, try to process the data inside of a computer. Let's imagine you could even fit in that computer. And, and typically, historically, people have not dealt with with large amounts of data. So let me try to draw a little computer for you here. Um, so it's not exactly a very elegant computer. And let's put some some characters and some buttons on the keyboard. So imagine you're trying to process a, a piece of, of data using a computer. Now traditionally what you, what you would have done is, is fit that data inside of a computer somehow and then written a computer program to analyze it. Now what happens if uh, you have actually a lot more data than you can fit inside of a single computer? Imagine you have like a big blob of data or maybe the data is located in different places and it's very hard to fit inside of, inside of one computer. Well, what, what computer scientists have typically done in this case is, is they've taken a bit of a divide and conquer approach. Rather than trying to take um, one computer and process all this data with one computer, they might use multiple computers and then process uh, different portions of the data with, with each computer and then find ways to combine the results. So they take a, a divide and conquer approach. Uh, and then really, uh, to be able to do this thing properly, you'd have to think about the answer for, to a few fundamental questions. So one is, how would you even pick up the problem in the first place? Uh, how would you distribute the workload among different systems? How would you handle communication between those systems? So for example, if one system uh, solved a sub-problem, it might need to communicate the results, the solution to that sub-problem to other systems, uh, and you'd have to be able to communicate effectively. And then moreover, as you start to increase the number of systems that are involved in a given computation, you now run another risk, which is that what happens if one of those nodes, one of those computational nodes, those systems actually fails and, and fails to produce an answer whatsoever. Uh, and so in, in those cases, you'd have to be very careful. You'd have to obviously um, uh, figure out how to handle failures appropriately. Uh, so MapReduce is basically a framework that tries to handle those kinds of questions. And MapReduce was actually uh, developed at Google, um, and, and they're the ones who are kind of well known for it, so Google. Uh, develop MapReduce, and it's specifically the researchers at Google who are who are really well known are uh, Jeff Dean, um, so Jeffrey Dean, and uh, Sanjay Gemawat, and they're the ones you'll typically hear in conjunction with MapReduce. And MapReduce is, is really around uh, provides four pieces of functionality around simplifying the process of parallelizing. Um, computation. So the real the four things it allows you to do is, is one is it handles the parallelization automatically. It provides fault tolerance. What happens in the in the presence of uh, something actually failing? It handles communication between systems, and it also uh, deals with monitoring the status of different systems and monitoring how well uh, a computer program is doing on those different systems. And so really, all a developer, all a programmer needs to know how to do in the context of MapReduce is um, figure out how they want to divide up the problem. So they would have to come up with, with really two pieces. One is how they divide up the problem into sub-problems, how they would process each sub-problem, and then how they would actually combine the results um, that come out of processing each sub-problem. And if, if a programmer can basically figure out those few things, basically how to divide the problem up, how to process each part, and how to combine the results, and really kind of three things that they have to figure out, the MapReduce framework takes care of all the rest. It handles all of these messy, behind-the-scenes details. Uh, the programmer just has to focus on the problem, and the underlying library uh, handles everything else. Okay. Now, that, that's one way to think about MapReduce. A, a more, uh, I guess, a more uh, formal way to think about MapReduce is, is in terms of what we think of as the logical view of MapReduce. Uh, so it's really the, uh, the logical view. Um, so the, what, what does a logical view look like? So the logical view is basically uh, with MapReduce is you have essentially two functions. You have a map function and a reduce function. Okay, and the map function you can think of as taking 
key value pairs and outputting a list of intermediary pairs. So these are maybe the initial pairs you start with and you, you, you output a list of, of keys and uh, other intermediary values. And then the reduce function uh, in turn will combine all the intermediary values associated with a particular key, a single given key. Okay, and this, this, this part right here is very important. It is a particular key, it is, is uh, a, a reduced function will work on a particular key. Okay, and if you think about it at, at a high level, that's how most parallel computation happens. When you, when you think of parallel computation or, or divide and conquer, you've got to figure out how you divide up problems into subproblems and, and how you would process each subproblem. That's really what the map function does. And then you would want to think about how you would combine the solutions, uh, basically the solutions to each subproblem, and, and that combination step is really what the reduce step does. Okay, so so having said that, let's actually um, walk through a simple example of map reduce, and then I'll, I'll give you kind of a higher level of view of it as well. So um, here's a simple example. Here's uh, what we think of the classic example. This actually is an example for doing. Uh, word count, and this is this is a canonical example that's that's, that's uh, used to talk about and, and and learn MapReduce. So it's the word count problem. Okay, and let's say you have a document and you have a number of words in the document. So imagine you have some kind of a document here. Okay, and uh, or maybe you have a lot of documents. Maybe it's 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 documents all over the place. Maybe it's or it's a very big document, and you might have a, a bunch of different words in documents. You have uh, some text in this document and the word count problem basically asks, what um, what are the frequencies of the individual words? So can you give me some kind of a histogram that, that tells me how frequently uh, given words appear uh, in this document? Okay, uh, and so you may have many different kinds of words and maybe some different colors. Uh, and, and this document may be very big. It may be too big to fit in memory. So imagine, you know, this document uh, could be you know it could be some huge piece of text. Maybe it's like an encyclopedia. Or maybe it's a document of, of uh, uh, that really comprises lots of different web pages on the internet. Okay, and the way you would approach this problem within the MapReduce framework is to come up with both the map function and a reduce function. The map function would basically uh, look at each word, each underlying word, uh, in in the documents, and the intermediate thing that's being output is the word itself, which is which is you can think of as the key now, and the value one. So you, you'd have kind of a uh, a W, which is a key, and the number one, which is a value. So this is a key that's being output, and this is the value. Okay. Now, the reduce step will take all the different intermediary values associated with a particular key. So in this case, the reduce step will take um, all the values associated with a particular key. So in, in other words, a given reduce step will work on a given word because the word is the key. And here, the reduce step will basically just add up the values associated with that key. So this, this is the values associated with the key. In this case, the value is 1. So it's going to add up a bunch of 1. So you might, if you have, let's say, across all of your documents, let's say you, you had a bunch of documents and you had um, three instances of a particular word. Let, let's say, let's call this word uh, W sub A, or let, let, actually, let me, let me make it a bit more intuitive. Imagine the word you were dealing with uh, was... Um, um, you know, hello. Okay, let's say the word hello. And maybe you had it uh, in your document. So every time you saw the word hello across your documents, you would you would get um, an intermediary key that's hello and, and a one as a value. Okay, and then the output after the reduce step, it would basically look at each of these keys and add the values. In this case, it's adding one three times, and and the the output would basically be um, uh, would basically be the the number, uh, or rather the key and, and the number. So it would be like hello and three, and this would tell you that, that hello occurred three times across your corpus of, of data across all of your documents. So let me actually provide another um, another way to look at MapReduce, and let me kind of give you a high level picture, and then we'll kind of we'll we'll, we'll stop. So actually, you know what? You know, I'm going to stop right here uh, with with uh, what I've told you so far about MapReduce. And then in the next video, I'll give you kind of a high level uh, diagram of how MapReduce might, might work uh, across a large data set. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.